stopping by though for an update from the operators. minutes and 20 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stage one propulsion is nominal. The beginning of the swarm has begun its ride to space with that clean electron liftoff from LC1. Electron's trajectory will take it up and over the South Pacific Ocean as it heads away from the launch pad. Our first mission milestone will be Max-Q, otherwise known as maximum aerodynamic pressure, which is the moment where Electron experiences the most amount of stress as it climbs through the atmosphere. Electron's We're coming up on that moment now and expecting to hear the call for Max-Q shortly. Heat free battery discharge nominal. Cleared max Q. That is Electron clear through max Q, with the rocket now at 15 kilometers in altitude and moving at over 2,200 kilometers an hour. Next up, Electron will perform three actions that are only seconds apart. The first is called Miko or Main Engine Cutoff, and this is when the nine engines that you can see glowing at the bottom of the rocket there shut off in preparation for the second step, and that move is called out as stage separation, when the first stage of Electron separates from its second and falls back to Earth. Now the third call out after separation should be second stage engine ignition when the single vacuum optimised Rutherford engine fires up to maintain the mission's course to low earth orbit. Now those three events are approaching fast so we'll bring up the audio channels from mission control now. Fifteen seconds to staging. Entered burnout detect mode. Miko confirmed. Stage two ignition confirmed. Stage seven successful. There we go, that was Miko, stage separation and engine start on the second stage. We have had a nice clean camera feed of those things happening with the camera view now held on the second stage engine as it powers the mission on. Beginning of the swarm is now over 100 kilometres above Earth, past the Kármán line and moving at more than 8,000 kilometres an hour. The next mission milestone is fairing jettison or separation of the nose cone and that's what protects Neonsat 1. As you just saw, fairing jettison is now complete. We dropped those two fairing halves early into the mission because they're not needed for satellite Guys. protection anymore now that we're through Earth's atmosphere. That dead weight is gone and the mission is now a step closer to our first payload deployment at 520 kilometres. We have a couple of minutes to go until our next mission milestone and that will be the battery hot swap on the second stage, currently expected to take place at the T plus 6 minutes 20 second mark. 
Right now, though, Electron's second stage is continuing along nicely to our target apogee of 520 kilometres for our first payload deployment for KAIST. This KAIST satellite is the first of up to 11 satellites planned by them, which will help to increase the program's observation rates of once every two to three days to three to four times daily. It's T plus four minutes into the mission. Electron is still progressing smoothly through flight and all remains healthy with KAIST and NASA's satellites. For NASA's payload, packed into this small satellite are composite booms that will unfurl once the payload is deployed, much like how a butterfly's wings emerge from its cocoon. This satellite will test how the pressure of sunlight pushing against its sails moves the satellite around. The closer to the sun, the better to test its solar sail technology, hence the reason for this mission requirement of a much higher orbit than the primary payload on Electron today. Throttling down. T plus 5 minutes 32 seconds and our launch operator's next call out will be for the battery hot swap. Our rocket engine's pump is battery powered and since it's been flying for a while now, its power source is starting to run low. So to keep the engine and the mission going, Electron's engine power system swaps to a new battery pack for fresh and continuous energy supply to the electric pumps. The old set of batteries will be discarded, which you can sometimes see on the screen as it happens. So let's listen into Mission Control for that call. Hot swap successful. And as confirmed by Mission Control, battery hot swap has been completed for the second stage Rutherford engine. Propulsion remains nominal and the mission is continuing on its journey to that first payload deployment with KAIST and NEONSAT-1. Now of course, once NEONSAT-1 is deployed, that is only the first of two satellites to be released on this mission. Electron is also carrying NASA's Advanced Composite Solar Sail System satellite that will be deployed at twice the altitude we're heading to now, from 520 kilometres above Earth to 1,000. To do that, we'll first need to repeat the stage separation process we completed earlier in the mission, this time separating Electron's third stage, or kick stage, from the second stage that's currently firing hot on your screen. That second engine cutoff milestone, which you'll hear called out at SECO, is expected at around nine minutes into the mission. T plus 7 minutes 47 seconds into the flight and the mission is continuing nominally. If you take a glance over at the right of your screen you'll see some telemetry from Electron's second stage showing us that we have about 16% of propellant form for the mission. Much like with the first stage, Electron will power down the Rutherford engine on the second stage to allow the kick stage to separate cleanly. We time the engine shutdown for right as we reach that target perigee of 250 kilometres. Let's listen out for that engine shutdown and stage separation now. Seco confirmed. Separation. 
great call from Mission Control. The second no, stage engine no, has turned cold and the kick stage has separated, ready to begin the payload deployment process. Now, this mission, of course, is a little different to a regular Electron mission, so here is a reminder of how today's two deployments will work. Now that, ki now that the kick stage has been released, it will now go into a phasing orbit of Earth. Because it's been set into an elliptical orbit from its perigee, it needs to head around to the other side of the planet to an apogee of 520 kilometres before it fires up the Curie engine to course correct into a circular orbit. Now, once it does, NEONSAT-1 will be deployed to begin its mission for KAIST, and that will be phase one for the kick stage. Phase two will see it light up its engine again to perform an apogee race to 1,000 kilometres, the target altitude for NASA's satellite. That apogee race will bring the kick stage out of a circular orbit and back into another elliptical one. Here, the kick stage will do another half pass of Earth before the dots reconnect again at 1,000 kilometres, where it will light up its Curry engine for a third time to circularise its orbit before payload deployment. Once that's done, it will be on to phase three. The Curie engine will ignite a fourth and final time to undo its circularization and bring it back into an elliptical orbit. This orbit lowering manoeuvre will help to speed up the kick stage's deorbit, doing our best to keep space as tidy as possible. For now, though, we will leave you with a graphic of Electron's coast phase ahead of that first Curie ignition, and we'll come back to this webcast to listen in for confirmation of that first payload deployment at around T plus 45 minutes. So we'll see you back here then. Small but mighty Curie engine. This burn will last about two minutes, setting us on a circular orbit at 520 kilometres in preparation for KAIST's NEONSAT-1 deployment. Now you've probably heard us say small but mighty a lot in reference to the Curry engine, but just how small are we talking? Well, it's right here. This engine powers our kick stage and gives us the flexibility to deploy satellites in a variety of inclinations and orbits depending on our customer requirements. Much like our Rutherford engines, the Curie leverages the rapid manufacture capability of 3D printing. It was first launched on our second mission called Still Testing, and since then we have carried a variation of the Curie engine on all but one mission, our suborbital haste mission out of Launch Complex 2 last year. Since hypersonic test launches like those don't have any orbital parameters, our suborbital missions don't need a Curie engine. There are three variations of the Curie engine. We have a monopropellant version, a bipropellant version, and of course, our most complex version yet, the Hypercurry, which saw us take a satellite all the way to the moon for NASA back in 2022. The standard Biprop Curry also powers our LEO satellites, like the bus we manufactured and operated to support VADA's in-space pharmaceutical manufacturing and re-entry capsule. Expected pedal deployment. Fantastic news there from Mission Control. Neon Sat 1 has been deployed. Congratulations to KAIST and its mission partners at the SATREC, the SATREC Initiative, CARI, and the Ministry of Science and ICT. And all the best with Neon Sat's operations starting from right now. The kick stage's journey is far from over though. In the next three minutes, it will light up its engine again to raise our apogee and carry NASA's payload to its target 1,000 kilometer altitude. With about an hour until the Advanced Composite Solar Sail System's expected deployment, we'll be ending the broadcast here, but we'll be sure to share with you confirmation of the payload's deployment across our website and social media channels. So check us out there for updates on the kick stage and deployment of NASA's payload. 
Thank you so much for joining us for today's mission. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control, signing off. <laughs>